right, friends, welcome, welcome. It's Wednesday and it's time for devotional and prayer live stream. All you right, will receive friend, power. Welcome, my name is Pastor welcome, Raz Drumi and it's my pleasure and it's to see you, to welcome you. And, and I hope we have a good and solid connection. Pastor Raz Drumi and it's my pleasure and it's okay. to see you, to welcome uh, you. Let's see. And I hope we have a good and solid connection. some kind of echo. Okay, let me remove that and see how it's going now. Should be better now. Let me just mute on all the rest. That is not okay. Yeah, I see we're doing much better. We can just add a little, a little music here that is playing just on the background. Very nice. All right, all right. I see we are connecting, and it's my pleasure. Let me also send you blessings, Sam. How are we doing, Kathleen? Hello. Uh, blessings everyone I pray that God will be in touch <laughs> tonight as we as we dive into that again all right so looks like we are pretty much set yeah let me sit a little and turn my mic right here I know you can't see my mic but it's right here so uh, all right 707 it's a good time that we can pray and we can begin. Father God, as we open the word, Lord, as we talk about you, we ask that you will open to us, that you will reveal yourself to us and our limited minds. But as much as we can understand, Lord, we ask that you will show us that you will lead that you will guide us lord because we want to know you we want to be as much as possible closer to you and my prayers for my friends for every single person watching and praying lord we are here because we love you and we want to know you more father in jesus name we pray hallelujah Amen. Amen. So, uh, I'm really excited and I'm always happy to hear what you are learning, Barney and Mike. Welcome, guys. Good to see you. I'm always excited. I'm always curious. Uh, what is it that you see? What the insights have you revealed? to yourself so far so what are the aha moments that you have like wow i mean i've thought about that but just it didn't hit me this way like we are discovering that now so um we are gonna so we are gonna uh continue the book and basically we use that book as a study guide it's by Leroy Froome, The Coming of the Comforter. And today we actually are going to talk about this word, comforter. So, thing of the Holy Spirit character. Jesus says, right, that he's another comforter. Jesus says, I will send another comforter. And what's interesting, it says, Lira Froome says here, these identify the promised spirit with the promising Lord in being, character, purpose, and activity. He is Christ's other self, as it were, identical in nature and character. So basically, when he says, I will send you another comforter. It means that the comforter, and by the way, we're going to talk about translations of the word parakletos, right? The Greek word um, that we have in the New Testament as comforter. 
Jesus was the first comforter. Right? If he says, I'm going to send you another, just imagine, you know, you call a comet, right? So a comet here, or nitrogaz, you know, and there is a guy coming, you know, there's some kind of issue, so you need it fixed. And he's coming, you know, um, what do you call him? Like a professional, right? So a specialist. And just imagine, you know, he just uh, probably not experienced well. And you call, you know, to the office and you say, well, can you please, you know, I mean, this guy couldn't really help. And, and they're, they're going to say, well, we are going to send you another professional, right? Like specialist. So he's also part, I mean, same in nature, same probably in skills, or maybe not perfect example. But when it says another comforter, so it means same of a kind. And that's what tells us that the Holy Spirit, and we're going to talk about that today, is not just mere power or influence or energy, right? Just uh, an example, like they are not perfect example again, like two sides of a triangle, alike, right? The length, the thickness, the angle, alike but not the same, because one side is on the left in triangle, right? Another one is on the right, but they are alike, right? So, and, and here we read in um, uh, purpose, being, character, activity. So, same of a kind. The comforter is an inadequate translation of the Greek word parakletos, the new name for the new ministry, right? The ministry, we say, of the Holy Spirit, upon which the Spirit was about to enter. Paraclete is better translated advocate. Most scholars say it also means representative, intercessor, pleader, Consoler. It's the same word used of Christ with a reference to his work before the Father. Right? What is that work? First John 2 1, my little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate. Right? with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So Jesus says, my little children, well, actually John, right? John says, John is writing to the believers, you know, but we have an advocate, paraclete. The same word is being used both for the Holy Spirit. And here in this case, John is using the same word for, and he says advocate, and then he explains because, so that they will not, you know, be mixed up. The Father, and then the Jesus Christ, the righteous. So, what does paraclete means? Representative, the one who represents. Does Jesus represent us? Before the Father, yes. Intercessor, who is intercessor? The one who is praying on someone's behalf. When I'm praying on your behalf, I'm an intercessor. When I'm going somewhere and I'm pleading on your behalf, I'm your intercessor. Pleader, right? Is that what Jesus is doing? Consoler, right? Consolation, comforting. So that's what uh, we have for translations. So in Greece and Rome, literary firm says, um, during New Testament times, the advocate held the client in two different ways. Sometimes he spoke for him before the tribunal, pleading his case for him. At other times, he merely prepared his speech for him, that the client might speak for himself. So Christ is our advocate with the Father and the Holy Spirit is Christ's 
advocate with us. Listen to this, very interesting. As Christ pleads for us, so the Spirit pleads for Christ in our hearts. Shall we who do all honor to the representatives of earthly governments but be guilty of disrespect and neglect of this advocate, of the heavenly King, Christ's representative to the church and to the world? So, this is, this is big. Christ is our advocate with the Father. And the Holy Spirit is Christ's advocate with us. Interesting. As Christ pleads for us, so the Spirit pleads for Christ in our hearts. That's how He is able to be with all of us, right? And that's why He is saying in John 14, It's good for you that I may go, because when I go, I will send... Uh, and, and, and basically, He is saying, that's how I will be able to be with all of you. It's only when the Spirit comes, right? Um, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. How is he going to come to us? Right? That's John 14, 18. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Like, Jesus, can you come to us? Like, to all of us at the same time? In your physical limited body? Like, how are you going to do this? And he's explaining it here, right? I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you and basically with all of you at the same time, forever. The Spirit of Truth, right? Talking about the Holy Spirit. And then he abides with you and he will be in you. That's how Jesus can be with us. The Holy Spirit who dwells in us, he advocate with us Christ before Christ right Christ advocate with us I know it takes a little time you know to process that which is absolutely fine because we just need more wisdom and actually the Holy Spirit who inspired you know authors to write this the same Spirit is available to us who can help us to better understand what we are reading and especially about the Holy Spirit. And there is, there is a part, there is a piece that we always have to keep in mind. Uh, and I'm just going to talk about that now. So. The discussion of the character of the Holy Spirit leads us directly into the consideration of His personality, right? So it's easy to think of the Father as a person and Jesus as a person. We seem to visualize them as it were. But the Holy Spirit is considered so mysterious and so invisible, so secret. And His acts are so removed from the senses that his personality is questions because contrasted with the other persons of the Godhead. He has, of course, appeared visibly to the human senses, taking for the occasion the form of a dove. Then too much is said of his influence, graces, power, and gift, so we are prone to think of him only as an influence, as power and energy, such symbols as wind, fire, oil, water, and so forth, right? So we see why do many people look at the Holy Spirit and like, just probably He's just force, mere force, just influence, you know, just grace, just, you know, because He's in the wind or, or He is represented by fire, oil, oil. And then there is a point here. If he is 
a divine person, and we think of him as an impersonal influence, we are robbing a divine person of the deference, honor, and love that is his due. Again, if the Holy Spirit is a mere influence of power, we shall try to get hold of it and use it. But if we recognize him as a person, we shall study how to yield him so that he may use us. So answer me. Do you want to hold of it, get hold of it and use it? Do you want to use the Holy Spirit or you want the Holy Spirit use you? Yeah, many people want to use the Holy Spirit according to people's understanding and do the works according to their own wisdom. But it's not according to the Bible. According to the Bible, it's the Spirit who can use us according to His will, just as, you know, it says that the Holy Spirit, you know, distributes, give the gifts according to to his will. So, if we believe we have the Holy Spirit, we might be tempted to be proud, to be boastful. Oh, I have it. I have it. I can do. Is it about you? Is it about what you can do? Because you have it. You have that power. So, is that you that can do? Oh, it's the Holy Spirit. God. Almighty, that use you to do what He wills. So the true understanding leads to humility, where we put ourselves aside. It's not about us. It's not about what we can do using the Spirit, right? And focus on others. So this humbles us. This reminds us that we are not the center of everything. It's not about us. A good, of, a good example of this is seen in the spirit of prophecy. We cannot use the Holy Spirit. That's Gospel Workers 285. We cannot use this Holy Spirit. The Spirit is to use us. So that line itself explains. Is it just the power or it's He? Because if it's just the power, yeah, you can possess it and you can use it. If it's Him, God, individual. So then it's not about me using Him, it's about Him using me. And it says here, the Spirit is to use us through the Spirit. God works in His people to will and to do of his good pleasure, but many will not submit to be led. It's very serious and I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not blaming, I'm not judging those people who understand it differently. It's, it's for you and for me to understand. I'm reading that so that I can understand. You're reading that so that you can understand how that works, so that you will not be tempted to turn this all around so it's now about you. No. He, God, works in His people to will and to do of His good pleasure, but many will not submit to be led. Yeah, many people don't want to submit. And therefore, they will find all kind of, you know, theories to prove that this is just a mere power. And thus, they're robbing what belongs to Him, robbing of what, well, what God is in. And, and we, just, um, we just read about that, right? We are robbing the glory that belongs to God. So, and then it says here, uh, they want to manage themselves. So people, they don't want to submit, be led. They want to manage themselves. This is why they do not receive the heavenly gift only to those who wait humbly upon God, who watch for His guidance and grace, is the Spirit given, the promised blessing claimed by faith, bringing all other blessings 
in its train. It is giving according to the riches of the grace of Christ. And he is ready to supply. You see, he is ready to supply every soul according to the capacity to receive. So, it's when you submit, when you're willing to be led, you will receive according to the riches of the grace of Christ. And He is ready to supply. So it's not that you have to possess. It's not that you have to find and conquer. He is giving. He is giving to those who is willing and ready to receive. So the Holy Spirit, friends, it's not a thing shadowy thing that comes from God. No, it's not just some invisible life force. Many people have separated the Holy Spirit from being a real person, making it seem intangible and unreal, hidden away. But we know it's not true. And today the Holy Spirit is one of the most real things in the world. He is the holy person. He is God. And Jesus was an incredibly influential person. And I love that point. That's in the book. Because Jesus was a real influential person. And the Holy Spirit was meant to replace Jesus, right? So if Jesus was the most influential person, so who else could replace Jesus? If the Holy Spirit would be just a mere force, just, just an energy. But that proves that the Holy Spirit was meant to take his place after Jesus left. So the Holy Spirit is also the most influential person here on earth. Only another person could fill the place of such an amazing person. Just being an influence wouldn't be enough. Just being an influence wouldn't be enough. I love some of those. I love some of those. And I hope, I hope that you take time, you know, to go through and you have the study guide in the description of the video here below. I'm just trying to see if you have it. Uh, again, it's, uh, it's not an easy reading, but, uh, but it's a good devotional source that if you pray and you seek, God is going to open and not just open, but fill you. And that's our desire, not just to know, not just to be able to explain theological, you know, difficulties, but our goal is to be filled with the Spirit because that's His mission here right now in this world, in this, is to fill us. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray that God will manifest Himself. That God's glory will be displayed. I'm sure there are many things happening around. We just need our eyes to be opened. So please let me know how we all can pray for one another. Um, if you have any prayer requests, if you have any names, if you have any anything specific or maybe just general or maybe, you know, like a, um, unspoken request, you know, that maybe you want to just, you know, um, uh, put a couple of uh, you know, plus signs, you know, that's popular in some uh, of the circles in, in social media, like you do like plus and I'm going to know that um, you need a prayer. It's just personal thing. And, uh, but we're going to pray for you. So I have some personal requests. So I'm putting here plus plus. So please pray for me and for my family. And um, I believe in the power of prayer. And I know that God wants to be, to be part of any situation that you are struggling with. 
And the Holy Spirit is ministering to you. When we do not resist, when we do not, you know, uh, reject, He is ministering. He is, he is here with us. So I pray that, uh, that we will, um, uh, will be blessed when we seek Him. All right? So let us start, and as always, we start with them. Praising the Father, O oh Lord, how good is your name. How joyful and pleasant it is to be for brothers and sisters together. Lord. And we are praying, Lord, and we are praising your name because you are good. You are an amazing Father. And we sing hallelujah, Lord, you are great. Too often we're just focusing on our staff and our needs and our problems and we lose you out of sight. But again and again we, we want to see how great you are indeed, Lord. And we are, when we are pausing, we can see that better clear and clear so we sing hallelujah Lord you are good and we ask Father that uh, we will always spend time talking to you giving thanks meditating looking back and, and seeing all the wondrous things that you have done Yes, Father, we thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit, our friend. And we want to be filled. We want to be led. We want to submit to the Spirit so that He can use us according to His will. Please, Lord, that's our prayer. That's our desire. And we thank you for this promise. You said that you want to give Holy Spirit to those who will ask and we ask. And we thank you, Lord. We also ask, Lord, to forgive us. We are confessing. And we are admitting our wrongdoings. And you said that you are just and faithful. And if we ask and confess, you will, you will forgive and you will cleanse. That's our prayer, Lord. Father, you also said, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and it will be opened to you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, whose blood was shed for our sins, we ask that you will supply our needs. And you promise that you will, even before we ask and present those to you, you will supply our needs. to be filled. We need to be reminded. We need to be led by the Holy Spirit, Lord. So, and we believe that you bless us with it. We ask that you will strengthen and increase our faith. Please, Lord. So that we will be strong when going through trial and temptations, when going through the wilderness veil of the shadow of death so that we will hold on to you so that we will always focus on you and never give up but hold you by the hand lord i'm praying for my brothers and sisters those who are weak those who are thirsty those who are hungry you are the bread of life you are the living water you are the way the life and the truth you are the provider lord so we pray that you will be the center of their life lord in your name we pray and i'm praying lord for my friends here every single person lord praying for lana tonight and her husband 
who is undergoing chemo treatment and uh, Lord I'm sure they need you and they need strength and they need hope encouragement I pray Lord that they will not give up that they will draw their strength from the living water well we pray for healing we pray Lord that they will see you when going through that experience please Lord Uh, we're playing for Roy Bowden, who had a stroke, and Lord also for Yolanda, Holy Yolanda, his family. Um, praying for Sam Brentford and his children, comfort and peace. Lord, you know them. They are your children. We don't have to tell you about this because you know them even before we get to know about what's going on. But we just express our pain. We just express our desire. We just express what we care for, Lord. But they are your children and you, Jesus, have died on the cross for them so that they can also be in your kingdom. And we're pleading, Lord, on their behalf pleading for the forgiveness of their sins, pleading that you will accept them, that they will believe in you. And if they are going through the wilderness, maybe doubting that you exist, we pray that you remove those. We pray that they will believe that this faith will be strengthened. We pray for ourselves that we will be praying for them that we will be encouraging them, that we will be those little stars that lead them to you, so that we will reflect your light and they could see you, Father. Give us wisdom to be faithful and to be guides for those people so they could see you. Praying for those unspoken requests, Lord. Every single one. You know every single name. Every single person we are mindful of. Lord, we pray that your will be done in their life. We pray that you will break the chains of addictions. That you will break the wall of um, insecurity. Break the walls of um, carelessness that you will melt the hearts of coldness and indifference, Lord. That your love will be among us. That our families will be strong. That we will hold on you and your love and fill us with the joy, endurance, so that we will always keep unto you, Father, and we thank you, Lord, because you are great and your mercy endures forever and you are in control. And we all sing hallelujah, worthy is the Lamb, Lord. We are looking forward to this day when you will come on the clouds and we will see you and we will be with you forever. Lord, what a day that will be when my Savior, I shall see, Lord. I, wanna, I want that day to get to become close. I want that day to come close sooner. Please, Lord, do whatever you need to do so that we will be ready. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah, friends. God loves you. And it's so always so pleasant to spend these half an hour, 35, 40 minutes together. May God bless you. I'll see you next time until then you know find for the study guide or for the whole book you know in the video description and may god bless you and speak to you when you study when you read when you open his word all right god bless you amen